A very controversial topic is currently occupying many Flight Simulator 10 forums, and this is how to achieve the best frames per second while not sacrificing the amount of scenery you have or the overall texture resolution. So today I'm going to teach you how to basically achieve this goal. So we're on our settings display tab right now. Set your device to your best available device and computer. I know that some of you have an extra video card alongside your new video card. Uh, you want to set it to your best video card available in your system. I only have one, and that's the uh, GTS 250. Target frame rate. Now, if you have a supercomputer, which I'm sure that most of you won't have those i7-980Xs, set it to uh, unlimited. But if you do have a really high supercomputer, and I mean like really, really good, you can set it to maybe a target frame rate where your system can consistently achieve without dropping frames because if you don't have a supercomputer and you set it to 41 frames per second even if your computer can achieve that it can't consistently achieve it and um, so basically you're gonna lose frames like that but if you got a computer again that can what I do is I would po probably test it I would set everything to max and then set the target frame rate to probably something where you will never go lower than. So if you never go lower than 41 frames per second, which for me it is absolutely impossible, then you can set it to there. But for the rest of you out there, you should set it to unlimited and don't uh, limit your computer. Uh, full screen resolution is important to keep it at your maximum resolution unless you're not achieving a consistent amount of frame rates again. So um, make sure you're also maintaining your aspect ratio. I'm running uh, 1280 by 1024, so that would be 4 by 3. But if you're running a uh, 16 by 9 monitor, maybe like a 22 inch 1280 by 720, or you're running one of those uh, 1920 by 1080 i screens, then um, yeah, so keep it at your aspect ratio. Filtering is a frame rate eater. I uh, tend to set it at anisotropic, but sometimes when I'm using payware aircraft, I would tend to set it down at trilinear. Uh, bilinear is sufficient for moderate filtering. Uh, just think of these as bilinear as times 2, trilinear times 4, and anisotropic times 8. Just think of it as that. It makes it much more simpler. Uh, you probably free up about 5 frames per second on average the lower settings you go, but I don't suggest you go to none because that is really degrading the image quality. Global texture resolution. This is an important thing because it does, again, uh, do something with frame rates. Uh, I set mine to very high, and it's just for the reassurance because if I set it to high, I will not see a notable difference, but I will see a difference in frames. I'll probably get maybe about 4 or 5 frames per second if I set it to high. But again, if your computer can consistently achieve a good amount of frames per second, you can set it to very high. I don't check any of these following Preview DirectX 10, Lens Flare, nor Light Bloom. Uh, all of these degrade uh, your frames per second, and even DirectX 10, if you're running Windows Vista or Windows 7, you're going to see flashy textures, and that will just drop your frame rates with even worse image quality. If you're running Windows XP, I still don't recommend you check this, because as far as I know, Windows XP runs in a 32-bit uh, operating system, and it can only support 3 gigs of RAM, and you're going to need way more for that to run DirectX 10. Advanced animations is important, especially if you're playing Flight Simulator 10. If you don't check that box, you should go back to Flight Simulator 2004, because advanced animations is one of the unique things that Flight Simulator 10 has. It includes moving jetways and uh, wing flex, so uh, those are really important to have. On your aircraft tab, I set mine to ultra high, which is basically averaging everything checked. Um, you know, these do this doesn't really matter. A high resolution 3D cockpit is important if you want to increase realism. I keep that checked. Uh, that doesn't really matter. Um, all these are checked. I don't believe they drop any frame rates, so, you know, just set it to ultra high, but if you basically uncheck this, you're going to get a custom option, but I suggest you keep that checked if you want to have a good amount of image quality inside your cockpit. Okay, on the scenery tab, this is very, very, very important, uh, because this eats fr uh, frame rates like no other. If you, like, set these all to zero, I would consistently achieve probably 200 frames per second but I don't really want that many and nor do I want that little stuff level of detail radius basically means how far you can see detailed objects including custom buildings or runways in very high detail if you set it to small you'll still be able to see like a runway 
at like 10 miles out the same way you would at large only the fact that it is less detailed you need to get closer to it uh this does eat frames a bit so i suggest you keep it on medium uh but if you it, it's pretty it doesn't eat that many frame rates so you can set it to large and won't see that much of a difference mesh complexity um i believe at 80 uh, you look, you're going to start uh, seeing performance issues. So if your computer can't achieve frame rates more than maybe 25 frames per second, set to 80 or less. Uh, it really basically determines how detailed your mountains will look like. I set mine to 100. Mesh resolution. Uh, this basically is uh, how like how detailed the ground will be. Both of these are pretty much the same texture resolution and mesh resolution. Uh, basically, how detailed to the single unit of measure you'll see it. It's down for mesh resolution at one meter, text resolution is seven centimeters. You will see a big performance increase if you set yours to 19 meters by 60 centimeters. Uh, you will see a big performance increase, but anything higher than that, uh, you won't really see uh, that much of a performance increase. In fact, you might lose a few frame rates. So test with these settings and see what you get. Water effects, I set mine to high. 2x now this is the highest or the highest setting you can go in fact of just having a good consistent frame rate because you set it to max you're going to see a good five frame per second average decrease high is, is pretty much the same as max the quality of the image is pretty much the same but if you set it anything like mid or low you're going to see a little bit of image uh, reduction in terms of quality but you will see performance increase because water effects does eat up frame rates again like no other and if you set yours from high or max actually and you set it to none you're gonna see like at least 20 frames per second increase so that's how important water effects is to frames per second uh, land te detail textures I really did not find anything to do with that so I just keep it unchecked Scenery complexity and auto gen com uh, density are really, really important when determining your overall FPS. Um, extremely dense on both of them is kind of pushing it because I only get maybe 45 frames per second on average, which is pretty good. But if you don't have one of those supercomputers, you can drop it down to very dense on both tabs and you'll see same, pretty much the same amount of buildings and trays for both of these and you'll see a good performance increase. Now, f um, obviously these will eat up frame rates a lot. And um, if you set it to none from the maximum setting, then you're going to see a really, really big performance increase. Special effects detail include fireworks and moving waves. Set it to medium or high. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really eat frame rates either, uh, as I tested. So that doesn't really matter. Weather. Now, when on my scenery tab, since I got all these really, really, really high settings, you're going to see that I set my cloud detail to uh, too simple because uh, it does eat frame rates and if, even if I set it to maximum that's crazy so I set it to simple clouds however if you're willing to sacrifice some scenery for clouds and then I suggest you set it to detail clouds cloud draw distance really the ultimate uh, or not ultimate uh, unlimited visibility is 60 miles so you really can't see any farther than that so I suggest you just keep it there. That'll help your frames per second a lot. Thermal visualization, basically behind the engines, you're gonna see like a little blur, like you would at like a bonfire. I don't set that uh, check because it does eat quite a bit of frame rates. Now um, these don't matter. These are just for realism. Traffic, more or less words, everything set to zero because they do eat frame rates. Basically, if you set like airline traffic density to like 46%, you're gonna have maybe I'd say 20 planes in the air and remember that your GPU and CPU have to process that extra amount of planes meaning that it's gonna have decreased frame rates so overall these are my settings I can show you right now if you got a moderate computer maybe like a dual core and maybe like an 8800 GT I'll show you how to get the maximum frame rates so hold on a second and I'm gonna show you how to achieve that alrighty so we're gonna go to trilinear here keep up with me now Set the global texture resolution to high, advanced animations, aircraft, everything checked here. Scenery, set it to medium, mesh complexity, set it all the way down to 80, mesh re resolution, 10 meters, texture resolution, 30 centimeters, water effects should be set to low 2x, C scenery complexity, uh, very dense, autogen density, dense. Special index, uh, effects detail set to high. Weather, these are your settings, you already see there. 
traffic zero. So I got all through that in less than a minute. So those are the suggested settings when it comes to having a moderately good computer. Uh, again, I am running an AMD Phenom 2 X4965, so that's quad core clocked or overclocked at 3.8 gigahertz. And um, so you probably won't be able to achieve the amount of settings I get if you don't have a similar system. But, you know, Flex Simulator 10 is really heavily dependent on your GPU and CPU, not really much your RAM. So just keep that in mind, and thanks for watching this video. Please ra um, rate, uh, actually I think it changed now, I think it's like, yeah, like this video if you liked it. And if you want to see more videos about tutorials on how to get better frames per second in many games, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.